Assalamu alaikum. How, how are you, my dear students? I hope that all of you are well by the grace of Almighty Allah. Welcome you all to NIBS Home School. This is Mahmud Rahman, assistant teacher of National Ideal English Version School. Today I am going to take a Bangladesh and Global Studies class for the students of class 9. Our today's topic is uh, chapter 2, page number 36 to 42. I repeat again our today's topic is chapter 2 page number 36 to 42 this is uh, from the important chapter of your book the independent Bangladesh okay let's uh, see the board at first this is the class for the students of class 9 subject Bangladesh and global studies topic chapter 2 page number 36 to 42 term annual lecture number 5 homework number 4 and you have to do five multiple choice question answers from today's class. So let's start. This is a very important uh, discussion from your uh, second chapter. At first, uh, I will show you the topics for today's class that will be discussed. Number one, the background of formulating the constitution of 1972. Number two, the characteristics of the constitution of 1972. Number three, the brutal killing of 15 August 1975. Number four, the heinous killing in jail, 3rd November 1975. And number five, the martial law administration from 1975 to 1990. And this has uh, two parts, that means there are two, were two rulers uh, in these 25 years, first one the rules of Jiao Rahman from 1975 to 1981, and second one the rules of General Ishad 1982 to 1990. So we will start from the first point, the background of formulating the constitution of 1972. And this is the constitution of Bangladesh. Still, this constitution is prevailing in our country and all the rules and regulations are based on this constitution. So now we will learn the background, how this constitution was formatted. As the head of the state and government, Bangamandu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman proclaimed temporary constitution order on 11 January 1972. The key features of this temporary constitution order as follows. I have noted all these points and important lines from your uh, this chapter and uh, make it as possible, uh, as decorated as possible. <coughs> Number one, this order was the temporary constitution order of Bangladesh. Number two, it would be enforced immediately. That means after formulating the constitution, it will be uh, came, come into action. Number two, three, it would be applicable to the whole country. That means this constitution is not for a particular region of the country, but it will be applicable to whole part of the country. Number four, a Ghana Parishad would be formed to draft a constitution for Bangladesh. Number five, there would be a cabinet to run the administration. Number six, the Prime Minister would be the Chief of the Government and the President would be the Head of the State. So, there are two posts, the Prime Minister, the post of Prime Minister and the post of President. Prime Minister would be the Chief of the Government, that means he will run the government, but President would be the Head of the State. So, we have learned from these six features that for Formulating the constitution, a Gana Parishad was formed. Now we will learn about this Parishad. The main objective of the Gana Parishad was to prepare the constitution. The elected members of 1970 general election were the members of Gana Parishad. The committee of 34 members headed by Dr. Kamal Hussain held their first session on 10th April 1972. This date is very, very much important in the history of Bangladesh because from this, on this day, the first session for formulating the constitution was held. The draft constitution was placed at the second session on 12 October 1972. 
just after few months this committee placed a draft constitution and it was adopted on 4 November and it was finalized 4th November and finally the constitution was enforced since 16 December and still we are following this constitution that was uh, placed before the session of Gano Parishad in 1972. This is also a history no other country in the world has uh, made uh, or prepared a constitution for them so early as we made in 1972 just after the independence of Bangladesh in 1971 we were able to uh, formulate or enforce a constitution for our country. The characteristics of the constitution of 1972. So what are the characteristics? The original constitution of 1972 was prepared with the characteristics given below. Number one, the constitution of 1972 was written one. That means this is not oral and it was non-changeable. Number two, the four fundamental principles of the state policy. There are four fundamental policies which the People's Republic of Bangladesh follow. Number one, nationalism. Number two, democracy. Number three, socialism. And number four, secularism. And these four principles are the principles of our state. Number three, the state would secure the basic necessities of life including food, clothing, shelter, education, medical care, and recreation. There are six basic needs and necessities. The state would secure them and it's written in the constitution. Number four, defending the fundamental rights of the people is the main characteristic of this constitution. If the fundamental rights of the people are violated, constitution will protect the people of the country. Number five, Bangladesh was described in the constitution as a unitary state to be known as the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Number six, the national parliament would be the sovereign body to enact laws. All powers in the republic belong to the people. This is the motto of our country. All powers of the republic belong to the people. That means people or the citizens of our country are the source of all powers. The constitution, so these are the uh, characteristics of, main characteristics of 1972 constitution. This constitution of our country are amended 17 times. But the 5th, 7th and 13th amendments are nullified by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has nullified this three amendments that means 5th, 7th and 13th. The next point and then point number 3 is the brutal killing of 15 August 1975. The brutal killing of 1975 we know 15th August. On this day we uh, lost our dearest uh, person and the uh, most brave person in the history of Bangladesh or Bengali nation is Bangamudu Sheikh Mojibur Rahman. Some ambitious military officers on uh, 15th August 1975 went to the, his residence at Dhanmondi 32 and killed all the family members. They also killed his uh, little son Russell who was only 10 years uh, of age at that time. So this is the uh, black day in the history of Bangladesh. and. Uh, the people who didn't want our freedom, you know, who didn't uh, support our uh, development or who were against the uh, nationalism, Bengali nationalism, did this heinous, heinous activity. And uh, as a result, we lost the father, we lost the father of the nation, Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The next point, the heinous killing in jail, that means the killing, uh, didn't stop. 3rd November 1975, after killing Bangladesh Sheikh the anti uh, nationalists who were against the freedom of Bangladesh, 
also killed some uh, great leaders who would uh, run the country after the uh, demise of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The killers of 15th August 1975 illegally entered the Dhaka jail on 3rd November 1975 with the permission of Khandagar Mustag Ahmed and brutally killed the four national leaders Sayyid Nazrul Islam, Tajuddin Ahmed, Captain Al Mansur Ali and AHM Kamar Zaman. These four leaders uh, bravely led our uh, liberation war. So ultimately, after the uh, assassination of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, they would run the country. But the uh, conspirators all killed them, these four people also. Now there were two uh, military rules in our country from 1975 to 1990. The first rule was the rules of Ziaur Rahman from 1975 to 1981. Zia Rahman was the commander of sector number two in the liberation war under the Mujibnagar government. He read the declaration of independence on behalf of Bangamutu Sheikh Mujib Rahman on 27th March 1971 from Kalurkhat radio station. After the fall of Mustaq Ahmed by a military coup, Zia Rahman was placed under house arrest. On 7th November, Zia Rahman was freed by a counter military coup and came to the limelight of power. On 3rd November 1976, Zia Rahman assumed office as the president of the country on 21st April 1977. During his rule, the political parties were allowed to do informal politics on some terms and conditions in 1977. He formed a political party called the Jatiyatabadi Ganatantik Dal with the leaders of different political parties. Later he established the Bangladesh Nationalist Party or PNP on 1st September 1978. This is the, uh, an important date. The uh, number one or leading opposition party at this present in our country is BNP and it was established on 1st September 1978 by abolishing the previously founded the Jatiyatabadi Ganatantik Dal. That means at first he established Jatiyatabadi Ganatantik Dal, then when BNP was established, this Jatiyatabadi Ganatantik Dal was abolished. During his rule, the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution was enacted. However, the Supreme Court has declared the Fifth Amendment as illegal through a judgment in 2008. Zia Rama took the initiatives to establish South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or SARC. President Zia Rama was brutally killed on 13 May 1981 at the circuit house of Chattogram by a group of military officers. As a result, the five and a half year long military rules of President Zia Rahman came to an end. After the death of Zia Rahman, we will uh, we uh, experienced another rule of another military rule, and this was the rule of General Hussein Muhammad Shah, and it was from 1982 to 1990. After the assassination of Zia Rahman on 13th May 1981, the Vice President Justice Abdul Sattar assumed power as the acting president as per the constitution. General Hossein Muhammad Irshad was the chief of army staff then. In the same year, Justice Abdul Sattar won the presidential election, but General Hossein Muhammad Irshad occupied the power on 24th March 1982 through a military proclamation showing the excuse of weak leadership of Justice Sattar, political unrest, corruption, anarchy and economic crisis. So we can see that uh, at first General Ishad was the chief of the army staff after the assassination of Zia Rahman. Justice of the Sattar, the Chief Justice, took the power as the President, as the Vice President, Acting President. 
and then he won the election. But as army staff, uh, chief of army staff, General Ershad proclaimed, uh, announced a military proclamation and showed some excuse. What were the excuses? Weak leadership, political unrest, corruption, anarchy and economic crisis. General Ershad assumed the office of the president of Bangladesh, Austin, President Asanuddin from the power on 11 December 1983. Ban on political activities continued since the proclamation of the martial law on 24th March 1982. The press was deprived of their rights. Sheikh Hasina, Dr. Kamal Hussain, Muhammad Farhad and some other leaders were either detained or placed under house arrest. A 15-party alliance under the leadership of the Awamilik and a 7-party alliance under the leadership of the PNP were formed. This anti-Ershad movement in 1990s called Mass Movement. And finally, on 6 December, General Ershad resigned. That means on 6 December of 1990, General Muhammad Ershad resigned and that was the end of militant rule in Bangladesh in 1990 and after uh, we uh, experienced the reformation of democracy once again. So that's all uh, for this today's discussion from chapter 2, uh, page number 36 to 42. I think uh, you have uh, well understood today's discussion for your better understanding, read your textbook, watch the YouTube classes and attend the online classes regularly. See you in the next class. Allah Hafiz.